Productions a travel guide for Zurich in Switzerland. In this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know to visit the Swiss city of Zurich. We'll start by taking a trip to Zurich's main train station. We'll take a stroll down Zurich's main shopping street. We'll stop in for some tasty Swiss sausages. We'll have some cheap eats at the Menorah department store and some vegetarian eats at Hittel. Then we'll talk about Swiss chocolates, followed up by the really neat fountains in Zurich. Then we'll talk about what souvenirs you might want to bring back from Switzerland. And then I'll round out the video with Zurich's other main attractions in the Old Town area. But before we get into all those attractions, let me just give you some general background on Zurich. Zurich is Switzerland's largest city with a population of 400,000. It is not the capital of Switzerland, but it is often considered to be the world's capital of banking. Zurich has been ranked in a number of surveys as having the best quality of life in the world. It is the wealthiest city in Europe, as well as being ranked as one of the top 10 most livable cities in the world. Many travel guides will tell you if you're going to Switzerland to skip Zurich altogether, but if you're coming to Switzerland and you're flying in, you'll likely be flying into Zurich. So I think it's well worth a day either on your way in or your way out. Everything I'll show you in this video, you can probably fit into one or one and a half days in Zurich. Zurich's main transportation hub is the Hauptbahnhof. My German's maybe not so good, but that's the main train station. This is the main train station. And uh, there's thousands of trains that come in here every day. So if you're going to other places, you'll probably come through Zurich's main train station. Also, this is Zurich's big shopping hub. Uh, the stores in Zurich close notoriously early, but the stores in the train station stay open often much later. And if you're looking for tourist information, find the big blue angel and just below it is a really helpful tourist service uh, shop. You can pick up maps, you can ask questions, and you can pick up all sorts of Switzerland souvenirs. And occasionally there's farmer's markets here too. I think every Wednesday evening, maybe more often, but today is Wednesday and there's a farmer's market back there with fruits, vegetables, and some tasty ethnic treats. Chances are if there's something you're looking for, you'll find it at the main train station. They've even got a 24-hour pharmacy. For exploring Zurich, where you'll want to start is on the Bahnhofstrasse. This street right behind me, and it's just out from the train station in front of that blue angel. It is the train station street. Uh, there's a big fountain right there, and this is where all of Zurich's uh, big shops and big department stores are. One of the main squares in the center of the city is Paradeplatz. This square right here, it's got the Savoy Hotel right there, one of the more expensive hotels in Zurich, so that's not where we're staying. The Frau Munster, which is right across the river from the Gross Monster, that's the Women's Minster. Famous stained glass in there, though there's an admission fee. But the coolest thing I like about this square is you can see all the trams that come by. Zurich has an extensive network of these streetcars. They'll take you about everywhere you need to go. So uh, you could walk, but why waste your feet when you can take those trams? They're neat, they're clean, um, and it's amazing that they actually stay on time because they have to stop a lot for people to cross the street. But you should be careful of them when you're walking around because they are kind of quiet. They can sneak up on you a little bit. And if you walk Bahnhofstrasse all the way to the end, you will get here to Lake Zurich. Uh, this is a really big lake in Zurich. It runs 40 kilometers long. From here, there's also some sightseeing boats that you can take out on the lake. On a warm day, you will see windsurfers out there and people doing all sorts of water sport lake activities or just sitting around and relaxing at some of the benches here. And yes, you might even just find some of Switzerland iconic swans around here on the lake. For some tasty sausages in a historic setting, visit the Zughaus Keller. This was built in the year 1400 as a armory, but now they serve sausages and beer. Mm. What a great combination. If you can't decide which sausage to get, they sell the sausage sampler, which is a um, collection of sausages on a skewer and it'll come by default with a potato salad, or you can also have it with what they call the roasty, which is kind of like hash browns. So definitely a lively place to check out. I don't know if you'd call these Swiss specialties, but 
They sure look tasty. For some cheap eats on the Bahnhofstrasse, stop into the Manor department store. There's the Manora restaurant on the fifth floor, which is the sixth because the zero floor is the ground level. It's a cheap cafeteria style buffet. It's kind of all you can eat. Like if you get one of the meats, then you can add as many vegetables as you want, as long as it's all on the same plate for the same price. My plate that has a little bit of chicken on the bottom and lots of vegetables and pasta on the top was about 14 francs. Another cheap eat in the downtown of Zurich is at the Hiltel House. Uh, it's kind of a cafeteria buffet style. You pick up a plate and you go through and you fill it up with as much as you want, and then they weigh it at the end and that's how you pay. Uh, the price is 45 francs per kilogram. So two kind of half full plates of food was 35 francs. I say it's cheap eats because, well, you do your math if that's cheap to you or not, but Zurich style, it is cheap. It is a particularly vegetarian restaurant, so there's a lot of vegetarian Indian, vegetarian Thai. Uh, you'll find some pretty good desserts, and there's a little bit of chicken if you look all the way up on top. One of the chocolate stores on the main shopping street is called Sprungli. It's right behind me right here. This is kind of their big flagship store. They've got two sides, a place where you can buy chocolates, but a place you can also sit outside cafe style, get coffee, drinks, you can get pastries. We had kind of a tasty chocolate pastry and they also sell chocolate Freud or chocolate milk. And this, well, it's the most expensive chocolate milk I've ever bought. Mm. 550 Swiss francs and it kind of has a unique taste. You know why? It has bourbon in it. Most of the chocolate stores in Zurich, you'll find they sell the chocolate by weight, typically priced per the 100 grams. Uh, most of these places, there's no minimum. You can just get one, two pieces if you want. If you got a lot of friends back at home, of course you can buy it by the box. Some of the more interesting ones that I think I had here were the champagne truffles. Truffles with champagne inside. I'm not sure that it's Don Perignon though. Zurich is a very fountain friendly city. There are over 1200 public fountains in the city of Zurich. Bottled water can be pretty expensive. It can be like three Swiss francs for a bottle of water. Mm. But if you run out of your water, you can just fill it up at these public fountains and drink. Delicious. My bottle is empty, but the good thing is there's plenty of fountains. And I found what I think is Zurich's coolest fountain. And I just can't figure out how to get my water bottle over there. But then I looked and it's not just decorative, there's actually a little spout right over here to fill up with some delicious water. I mentioned it's delicious, but mm, the thing is it's also cold and refreshing too. It's probably melted snow that fills this up. So when you're hot, you don't even need refrigerated water, just get it right out of the fountain. Wondering what souvenirs to bring back from Zurich? Well, the Swiss are famous for their watches. The Rolex store here, they've got some watches in the window. Well, some that don't have prices, but the ones that do have prices, this one here is 35,000 francs. Pretty cheap, bring that back to a loved one. You know, an interesting statistic about Switzerland is 95% of the world's watches that cost over $1,000 come from Switzerland. So you can buy one of them right where it's made. Some slightly more affordable souvenirs are Swiss army knives. Something you'll see in a lot of stores are wooden cows. Yes, wooden cows, wouldn't you know it. And, uh, but if you can afford a Rolex, then buy one for me too. Come up to the Lindenhof Park. It's this park on top of this little or kind of big hill in the middle of Old Town Zurich. And you can see commanding views of the river and the buildings below. Great place to get your orientation. Though I must say the park is not the most beautiful. I guess because it snows here, there's not a lot of grass, but the view is beautiful. Iconic to the Zurich skyline is the Grossmünster, the Great Minster Church with its two soaring towers. You can pay five francs and go all the way up to the top for some pretty good views of Zurich. Even if you aren't climbing the tower, do you head inside. Admission is free. And make sure to check out the crypt right below the altar. There's this kind of spooky statue and a sign that said the first church is uh, thought to be built on this site in the year 700 something. 
Just across the river from the Gross Monster is the Frau Monster. This is the Women's Minster. It has some beautiful stained glass windows inside. Admission to this one is five Swiss francs. A good place to come in the evening when all the shops on the Bahnhofstrasse are closing is across the river on the side with the Gross Monster, the church with the two kind of steeples, into the Niederdorf district. This is the Niederdorfstrasse, big pedestrian street, and this area has a lot of restaurants, bars, um, and it's also kind of the slightly seedier side, the red light district. I'm looking at a place that does tattoo and piercings too. So uh, many tourist books would describe this as the colorful part of Zurich. That brings us to the end of this video. And so Topher and I, we hope you enjoyed it. If you got something useful out of it, please hit the thumbs up below, or maybe consider subscribing for new videos every weekend. Or you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, links in the description below. Or you might enjoy watching some more of our Switzerland series. Click either of these to watch, or if you haven't subscribed yet, click on this yellow ball over here to subscribe. All right, bye-bye.